Good morning, good morning. Welcome to United Unitarian Universalist Congregation. My name is Reverend David Kramer, minister here at this church, helping with today's service are Alex Chilson and our lovely choir. This is going to be a music service, and I think you're going to really enjoy this. Um, thank you for coming on this fragrant morning. <laughs> This will be my last Sunday with you for a while as I head off to General Assembly and then to my usual study leave and vacation for the summer. You are heading into a summer of adventure as well as the three UU congregations in Waukesha will be sharing services. I'm not going to go into the schedule in detail right now again, but there are printed copies out on the ledge and it's all over the website, thanks to Sam and Alyssa. Um, so check the schedule on where things are going. I want to say once again what a great year this has been. We talked about this last year and it's just been fantastic to be back together again and all of the support and the, the, and the really positive energy that is going on here. Thanks so much. A couple of things to note before we begin. Juneteenth is tomorrow. It's the anniversary of the order by Major General Gordon Granger on June 19th, 1865 after the end of the, the Civil War, proclaiming freedom for enslaved people in Texas. From a book titled, How the Word is Passed by Clint Smith. Here's, here he's quoting Grant Mitchell, a white man whose fa family has sponsored the event uh, for several years. Today is a day for jubilation. We celebrate this day as, the, the, uh, we, as word reached Galveston and then spread throughout the region and into other southern states that freedom had come to millions and a great injustice had been undone. We celebrate the day we got word our great nation, torn apart, but once again united, had taken one bold and decisive step toward fulfilling a promise at the core of its creed that all people are created equal. But this is not just a celebration. The path toward justice is long and uncertain. It sometimes moves forward and sometimes winds its way back. So today is also a day of reflection. It is a day to look around and ask ourselves, where are we on that path? Today is Father's Day, a good day for enjoy enjoying dad jokes or suffering dad jokes. <laughs> Yesterday, I pulled up the eulogy from my own father's funeral five years ago and re-remembered some things. One thing, he was a good singer. He had a good voice. He never sang in a choir that I know of, but he made up silly songs in the car as we were driving places, like to the landfill or up to a farm where he offered advice and support from the university. My sisters would join in singing harmony. I never did because I was above that. But the songs are still there in my head. I hope you have some time to reflect on your own fathers today. Sing their praises if that's the thing to do or tell a few jokes. Today also is flower communion. The flower ceremony or flower communion originated in 1923, 100 years ago this year. It was created by Reverend Dr. Norbert Chopek of the Congregation of Liberal Religious Fellowship in Prague, Czechoslovakia. It is an annual ritual that celebrates beauty, human uniqueness, diversity, and community. Today we will be celebrating the centennial with special music throughout the service, including a cantata and, and accompanying readings that were, it's, it's titled Beauty Calls Us Together, written for this anniversary by Reverend Suzelle Lynch, who formerly served our congregation in Brookfield. She collaborated with some other lit, uh, uh, lyricists and musicians, including Catherine Kanan, Ruben Puranen, uh, Anne Merdinger, and Norbert Chopek. With that, please center yourselves for worship as we light our chalice. Isabel?
May this flame kindle with us the warmth of compassion, the glow of love, and the fire of commitment, and the light of truth. Here together we scatter and nurture seeds of spirit, service, and community. And now. Thank you, choir. 
Each week we share in the life of this congregation by sharing joys and sorrows. Last week, you may recall, we did not do joys and sorrows because it was such a full morning with the annual meeting. And it was, I guess, the right thing to do, but it also reminded me of how vital this is to our congregation. So we're going to make a little bit of space today for joys and sorrows. Again, we again have a very full morning, but if you have something to share, Please come forward, tell us your name, what's on your mind, take a stone from the bowl, hold it in your hand, and when you are finished, place it in the bowl with the water to let the ripples carry your concern out to the wider community. So at this point, if Lily and Adia and Zoe and anyone would like to leave, you can for a little while, but we're going to want you back when we do the flower communion, okay? So we're going to let you know. Um, or you can, you can stand a solid here with Molly, who will be sitting up here with a choir the whole time. Your choice. See you guys in just a few minutes. So part of the cantata is some new hymns. We're going to sing them in a minute, but not just yet. This cantata, as I said, was written by Suzelle Lynch from our uh, sister congregation in Brookfield. She writes, imagine the courageous people of a war-weary nation, finally free to reclaim and renew their spirituality and culture after the war to end all wars. Imagine their hunger for soul-filling music and a message of unity that reaches across all lines of difference. Imagine their longing for a community where their gifts and needs would be embraced. 100 years ago, the Congregation of Liberal Religious Fellowship in Prague, Czechoslovakia, was the community of their dreams. The Prague Congregation was founded by Reverend Dr. Norbert Chopek and his wife, Maja. Dr. Chopek, a brilliant writer and preacher, avid singer and eager student, was born into his mother's Catholic faith in Bohemia, and he grew up in a home flavored by his father's history with the Moravian brethren. Chopek grew up thirsting for a faith free from hypocrisy, a faith that would respect his mind and help him give voice to his convictions. As an adult, Chopek served Moravian and Baptist religious organizations, growing more religiously liberal with each passing year. He left Bohemia under government threat and accepted a call to serve a Baptist church in New York City until one day in 1919. That day he wrote in his diary, I cannot be a Baptist anymore, even in compromise. The fire of new desires, new worlds is burning inside me. In 1921, inspired and empowered by connections he made with the American Unitarians, Dr. Chopik and Maja returned with their children to their native land to build a new religious movement they dreamed of. That religious movement caught fire in a nation alive with freedom and longing for change. The Prague congregation's liberating message and vibrant music drew thousands to worship, yet something was missing. A new ritual was needed to unite the diverse and eager crowds. Chopik created a ceremony he described as a new experiment in symbolizing our liberty and brotherhood. He asked each congregation member to bring a flower to church from their garden, field, or roadside, gathered in one vase, or a few, they com their combined beauty was dazzling, yet each blossom retained its uniqueness. 
And then Chopik wrote, when they go home, each person is to take one flower just as it comes without making any distinction where it comes from and who it represents to confess that we accept one another without regard to class, race, or other distinction, acknowledging everybody as our friend. This compelling ritual of individual free will, the beauty of diversity and the power of unity was held for the first time on the anniversary of the Prague Fellowship's founding, June 24th, 1923. It became known as the Flower Ceremony or Flower Communion and the Prague Fellowship celebrated it annually as they continued to grow and thrive. But not all was peaceful. In Czechoslovakia, World War II brought great troubles, and in 1939, Maja Čapik came to the United States to raise funds to help war refugees. She brought the flower ceremony with her to the Unitarian Church in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and soon the tradition spread to congregations across the country. Norbert Čapik stayed behind in Czechoslovakia to help his people. He nurtured their spirits with his message of their inherent worth, but the Nazis found his message dangerous and arrested him for treason in 1941. He was sent to Dresden prison and then to the concentration camp at Dachau. Chopik kept his spirit strong by sharing his poetry, music, and flower ceremony with other inmates but the Nazis put him to death a year later. This year, we honor the 100th anniversary of the first flower communion with music composed to celebrate the blessings of diversity, the beauty of freedom and dignity, and the power and strength of the religious movement founded by Norbert and Maja Čapek, a movement that continues to thrive today. Alex.
Trinitarian Universalism is a living faith tradition meant to grow and change with the wisdom and knowledge of the times and with the life experiences of our congregation's members. We come to this faith from many places, some of us without formal religious training, some after years spent with other religious paths and practices. Norbert Chopik brought a rich life of religious scholarship and service to the Unitarianism of his time. In our next song, Chopik's Journey, we hear his heartfelt search for a faith of integrity that also could serve the needs of his people. Listen for the refrain, something, something didn't feel right in my head or in my heart. I knew that reason and love are the only place to start. Alex?
Each month, we share our weekly offering with an with a organization in our greater community, and this month, we are sharing, splitting our plate with We Got This Milwaukee. So please, as the plates are passed, give generously. Alex will play for us while we, while we receive the offering. Music was a joy and a lifeline for Norbert Chopek. The texts of seven hymns he wrote while he was incarcerated in Dresden prison are preserved in a book, Norbert Fabian Chopek, A Spiritual Journey, which was written by Richard Henry. Henry notes that in Chopek's hymns, we sense his premonition of his fate, yet they are full of hope and beauty. In the Depths of My Soul adapts one of Chopek's hymns and sets it to a med meditative chant-like melody. The words remind us that in difficult times, solace is waiting deep within us. In the depths of my soul, there where lies a source of strength. you can hear this, this would be a good way to bring the children back. 
The words and melody of hymn number eight, Mother Spirit, Father Spirit, and the UU hymnal singing the living tradition were written by Norbert Chopek, translated into English and adapted to the familiar song with its questions and images of Earth's beauty. Chopek's hymn tells us that he felt the spirit of life and love with him always, and in this new song, a voice of the spirit answers each question journeying with Chopik and with all of us. Because of the spirit of life and love is expansive, not limited by gender, the language has been updated. We invite you to listen to the diverse divine voices that sing, you are my beloved. The choir is now going to, to offer you the gift of mother spirit, father spirit, just as soon as we get another soprano back.
Then as now, in just a few moments, you will be invited to come forward to choose a flower from the vase, one you didn't bring to take home with you. First, a consen consecration, consecration from Dr. Chopik. Infinite spirit of life, we ask thy blessing on these thy messengers of fellowship and love. May they remind us amid diversities of knowledge and of gifts to be one in desire and affection and devotion to thy holy will. May they also remind us of the value of comradeship, of doing and sharing alike. May we cherish friendship as one of thy most precious gifts. May we not let awareness of another's talents discourage us or sully our relationship, but may we realize that whatever we can do, great or small, the efforts of all of us are needed to do thy work in this world. So now, please come forward to select a flower and return to your seat. Do this as orderly as you can, but you know, we're a Unitarian Universalist, so however it goes. If you are sitting next to someone who might have difficulty getting up or down, you might offer to help them or bring them a flower as they wish and are able. And as you approach our communion table, please do so with a sense of how important it is for each of us to address our world and one another with gentleness, justice, and love. As you take your flower, noting its particular shape and beauty, please remember to handle it carefully. It is a gift that someone else has brought to you. It, re it represents that person's unique humanity and therefore deserves your kindest touch. Let's sing from you I receive to you I give as we do this, repeating as necessary until we are done.
Chapek offers a prayer. Please join me in this spirit. In the name of Providence, which implants in the seed the future of the tree and in the hearts of men and women the longing for people living in human love. In the name of the highest in whom we move and who makes the mother and father, the brother and sister, what they are. In the name of sages and great religious leaders who sacrificed their lives to hasten the coming of peace and justice, let us renew our resolution, sincerely to be real brothers and sisters regardless of any kind of bar which estranges one from another. In this holy resolution, may we be strengthened knowing that we are one family, one spirit, one love. May we endeavor for a more perfect and more joyful life. Amen. Let's sing together one more time. There is a final hymn now with words on the wall. The tune is going to be unfamiliar, uh, but Alex will play through it and the choir has the music. Follow along as you can. Please rise in body or spirit. has changed in the hundred years since the first flower communion, but our commitment to the values it embodies grows stronger as we continue to shape a faith that fiercely and gently calls forth beauty and kinship in easy times and in heart-rending challenge. As we Unitarian Universalists work to dismantle our culture of oppression and exclusion, learn to truly embrace a multiplicity of cultural worldviews and shift our historical center to follow powerful new leadership by those whose voices have been suppressed for too long, 
we make real the bold vision of Norbert and Maja Chapek and the flower communion they began. Their spirit, courage, and commitment live on in us. May we ever remember our continuity with those who struggled in generation after generation for peace and justice and liberty. As we share our flowers, may we always remember the abiding beauty that calls us together. Go in peace. And so ends our service. <laughs>